Hey, this is Rob Michaels, and you are watching the Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we are continuing our dissection of Along Came a Spider, Venom Along Came a Spider, which is a graphic novel that contains like three miniseries in it, which is the one we already talked about, Along Came a Spider. It uh, also has The Hunted in it, which we're going to talk about today, and The Hunger, which we're going to talk about in a few days from now. And then it also contains this Christmas story that we already went over, and two stories about a character named Hybrid. So there's a lot in this graphic novel. I would say it's definitely worth the price if you find it out there in digital or print form, whichever one, you know, complete your collection better definitely pick it up it's a lot of fun so we're going to continue here with the hunted which is another story written by larry hama it's three issues and this one i think i like this one a little bit more because of the art uh so larry hama stuff isn't always you know uh, on point with me. I mean, I like some of the stuff we'll, we'll talk about in the next book, uh, like License to Kill and stuff. I mean, there's some interesting elements, I think, in some of those stories, but not fully. Um, I still feel like Larry Hama just didn't have a full grasp of the character or didn't want to really dive into who the character was. He just wanted to just tell wacky stories, which is fine. You know, sometimes writing comics can just be a job and you just take the job and you do the best you can. Um, but, uh, the, you know, for us, you know, who are looking back on this stuff and trying to fully dissect Eddie and see like these moments of growth and stuff, I feel like there's far few between them in Larry's runs. And which is a shame because I think Larry's actually a very talented writer on other books. But again, these are just my opinions. I'm not here to dog the guy at all. Uh, this is just my thoughts on his stuff. But uh, if you have a different one, you know, let me know your opinion down below and we'll continue our conversation down there for sure uh so in this one duncan rollo does the artwork who i'm a big big fan of this is like his early days drawing comic books and stuff um so the artwork's nice i can tell it's duncan's early style um i would love to see a duncan rollo style nowadays with venom uh but uh, this is kind of neat the way he draws venom is nice it brings the cops back in so again larry hama he likes to tie in this stuff he likes to bring in these cops that he set up in the you know some of the earlier stories he did and then also you know he i think they pan out later and they bring in FBI and stuff like that with Venom. Uh, so yeah, all this stuff kind of threads together in a, in a neat way. Uh, so I, I like that he is at least trying to pay attention to continuity uh, for his stories because a lot of those miniseries at first were just like jumping all over the place. And as you know, because some of, I think some people were asking me like, hey, when does this take place and stuff? Um, well, it takes place in New York because in San Francisco, that was all the stuff leading up to Planet of the Symbiotes. After Planet of the Symbiotes, Eddie found himself back in New York and he kind of just stuck around New York for a while. So this is him still in New York dealing with all the characters that he started to meet after Planet Symbiotes, like those cops and things like that. So, um, anyway, so they're still working on trying to find Eddie, um, and, uh, you know, Anne's still out there, you know, kind of worried about him a little bit. And meanwhile, Eddie is, you know, he's going hungry. He's starting to, you know, not eat, you know, he's not, he's not making any money. Obviously he doesn't have a life anymore. So he's basically homeless and squatting at places. And so he actually finds the Daily Grind and they just do this little like fun little nod to Ben Riley because Daily, Daily Grind is the the, the the coffee shop that Ben Riley worked at. So, he, you know, he couldn't go be Peter Parker and be a photographer and take over Peter Parker's life um, when he became Spider-Man. He still had to be Ben Riley because Peter Parker like, you know, made it you know public or at least to the people in his life like the Daily Bugle, like, hey, I'm gonna move. Me and Mary Jane are gonna go get married. We're gonna, you know, step away from New York for a while. So he couldn't just become Peter Parker. So he worked at this place called the Daily Grind, which is like a little coffee shop. So Eddie was like, you know what, I'm, I'm hungry. And I think some guy comes up to him and says, hey, here's a dollar, you know, go get yourself a cup of coffee. And then I'm, you know, Eddie's like, hey, thanks. Why are you doing something nice for me? He's like, oh, pay it forward. You know, just do something nice for somebody else one day. So Eddie's like, okay. And he goes into the coffee shop. And when he's there, Ben comes in. And he instantly recognizes Ben as Spider-Man because obviously the suit is reacting. It's like, hey, I know what who that is. Uh, we bonded with him briefly. That's Ben Riley, and so uh, you know, or Spider-Man, like the new Spider-Man. So Eddie's like, God, okay. So when by the time Ben turns around, he's like, wait a minute, who is that guy over in the corner? Because remember, him and Eddie don't really know each other like Peter and him do. So when he turns, Eddie's already gone. He never got to finish his food or his cup of coffee or anything like that so uh so right away i kind of like that because i'm like oh you you feel for eddie he's not even safe in his own city like or you know i mean obviously san francisco is kind of his city but this is him back in new york back where he you know he's trying to be with Anne. he's trying to keep an eye on her um he's, you know he's trying to protect people and he can't even eat he can't he's at the bottom of his barrel so i like that part i think larry did a good job setting that up in this storyline and like i said it, it also helps that the art is really good because i think duncan rillo's 
uh, you know, imagery and his style and like the emotion he puts on some of the characters' faces, I think he does a good job of it. And he helps sell some of that emotion without Larry having to, you know, say it, which is kind of cool. Um, and so when, you know, at that point, the cops show up or, you know, helicopters show up, they find Eddie and he starts swinging away and he's on the run. And basically what happens in this book is that he's being stalked. So him and Scream, so for you Scream fans out there, Donna Diego is actually in this book. And she still has her symbiote. So we don't really, you know, we're get, kind of getting her backstory. Where was she during the hybrid stuff? The other suits have been taken away. She's still alive. She's out there. She's kind of squatting uh, in a place. And she has like someone trying to help her keep her alive. And she's like, I don't need help being alive. I'm a symbiote. I can take care of myself. But then uh, at this point, they realize that, you know, oh, the guy that's like talking to her, he's actually not even, uh, you know, her guard or whoever he's supposed to be. It's Eddie in disguise. And he's like trying to track her down. He's like, you know what? I lost track of the other suits, but I'm going to try to find Donna Diego so he kind of is the hunter at the beginning of the storyline but as but there's still a creature working or lurking in the background so as you know eddie's hunting scream in the first issue and trying to look for her and find out where she is um he finds her at the beginning of the second issue but at that point so did this other thing that was hunting both of them which is called a xenophage and this creature i think they even made a toy out of it it's really cool looking actually i think the design of it it's really alien looking like you know when every time you know you see aliens and stuff they make them very humanoid looking arms and legs this one has an arm and like a torso and you know that kind of thing but it kind of moves and shifts around it's very bug look like looking it's really creepy and cool um as you'll see in some of the artwork up here but uh, this thing is called a xenophage and it actually is from an ancient race that fed on symbiotes it actually uh it'll eat other things sure but uh symbiotes are definitely like its main source of nourishment so it's coming to you know it, it heard that earth or found out that earth has a couple symbiotes on it and even though scream and the others aren't like you know they're they're pulled from seeds that were came out of venom it's still a symbiote and it's like yeah i have a buffet here waiting for me so this xenophage thing shows up and uh you know tries to eat uh scream and eddie and it captures scream and eddie's out there and now as the hunter in the first issue looking for scream now eddie's the hunted as this thing is coming after him so in the third issue the suit you know the the xenophage finds him it grabs eddie the cool thing is is this opening uh you know spread from the third issue it actually has those null spirals uh in eddie's eyes i thought that was cool i was like wow i never noticed that before i guess well i mean i probably noticed the spirals before but because you know the 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 null stuff is new um, I thought, hey, that's kind of cool that there's, it's not exact, but it's still like this cool little, you know, edgy, you know, spiral that's in his eyes. Um, like, that's kind of neat. I don't know. Uh, I, I hope Donnie Cates, you know, if he's watching this episode, I'm sure he's done a lot of his research too. Hopefully these xenophage creatures show up at some point in his run with Null and stuff. I think that'd be pretty cool to see how they work into, you know, the, this storyline. Um, but yeah, it's neat. Uh, and you can see the spirals in his eyes in that image that you can see on the screen there. Uh, but this is where Duncan really shines. His ba battle scenes are amazing. I think the artwork and the, the way the panel layouts are, are fantastic in this. And so Venom is taking the fight to this creature and they're going all at it. And meanwhile, there's like a sniper nearby who's going to try to help Eddie out. They take, you know, they shoot at the creature and uh, Eddie sets up all these explosives around it, traps it into an area, lures it in. The suit or the, the xenophage goes over and bites Eddie and rips its head off. Like, so Eddie's turned into Venom at this point. And, uh, and the xenophage comes in, bites the venom head and rips it off, which I was like, hey, that's kind of cool because that's, you know, what happens, you know, like Eddie always eats other people's heads off. So it was neat to see venom's head get ripped off. But what ended up being is that that was just a piece of the symbiote that was wrapped around the last piece of explosive. So when it ate and pulled out, it actually swallowed uh, a little piece of the symbiote that was willing to sacrifice itself, I guess. Um, but then also, you know, a bomb. And then so Eddie regrows his head and he's like, yeah, that wasn't really my head. Uh, I just tricked you and uh, Sayonara, mother effer. And he jumps out, you know, um, through a window and stuff and the explosions go off and it sets all the other ones off and it kills the xenophage 100% dead or at least this one xenophage uh, but who knows maybe a government lab took it experimented on it maybe it's still alive out there somewhere um, or maybe there's more of its race out there somewhere looking for symbiotes to eat there's definitely a lot of them on earth now that there's like the cult of carnage and everything so that'd be a cool thing to bring in at some point is bring back the xenophages because i'd love to see ryan stegman do a redesign of this uh, this monster or ibon coelho or someone do a redesign because the, the monster looks cool it has like this like fluffy craven kind of feather things you know it's like or a vulture the kind of on its arms and shoulders so uh, i don't know I, i'd love it i'd love to see that so uh that was the the hunt the hunted 
and it's it's okay like you know i would say out of all the larry hama stuff like uh, and even rereading i was like all right this is a little bit better than i remember because this was another one of those stories in the 90s where as a teenager i was like i don't remember it being that well but of course my memory is crap and also i had different tastes at that point now i have different tastes than i did when i was you know 15 years old when this book came out so rereading it is kind of nice it's, it's fun to kind of explore this and see what uh you know what they want to do with these characters i still don't feel like there's a ton of growth with eddie himself in this but i felt like there was at least one or two human moments in this with eddie that made me feel that connection that i always like to feel with eddie which is what brings me into reading stories of his when i can connect to them i like the story a lot more and so in this one i was like oh, i couldn't connect fully but at least that intro part i i did i was like oh, that's very human you know he has nowhere to really go he's poor you know he's he's wondering where his next meal is going to come from you know some of us have been there before so it's it was it was nice to see explore that and uh, to see that done with this character uh it always works in my opinion so let me know what you think have you read the hunted yourself i'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below uh, if you have a different opinion to me if you have the same opinion for me i'm just kind of lukewarm it's like in the middle like i didn't like along came a spider i think that's the weakest story in this book this one's kind of near the middle and i feel like the hunger is probably a story i liked a little bit more because that actually dealt with venom and his relationship with the suit a lot more but it was written by a different writer named Len Kaminsky so we'll dive into that very soon in a few days but in the next episode we got one more hybrid episode to talk about so I can't wait make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out thanks for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the future peace